Um, so we're doing springtime foods. We're doing chili, rhubarb chili. It's simply chili, and you know in the United States there's four to five hundred recipes for chili, and this is one of them. And then we're going to do smashed radishes, which are radishes that are smashed, yep, and then an oil and vinegar dressing on them. And because it's springtime, we will put them on dandelion greens. And you know, these are difficult to eat. But it will look beautiful in the bowl with the radishes on top. And feel free to eat as many dandelion greens as you want. Then we're going to do stir-fried peas. Again, spring and asparagus. And I did find Harvest Snaps baked green pea snacks. Cracked and spicy black pepper. Gluten-free, no kidding, they're peas. Let's see. Oh, they look like the dried up old peas that you would not want to eat, but we will today. Springtime also is the time for strawberries. So we're doing chocolate dipped strawberries. I've dipped some and we have more that we're going to dip into chocolate. Then, oh, my sous chef, which is my grandson, Hello. August Montemayor, Augie. And we're going to, we have some, um, white chocolate and we'll show you how to decorate with white chocolate in a little piping bag or just with your fingers. Okay, I'm going to start with the chili because that has to cook. In here I've, um, we'll put, today we're doing turkey. I think we need a little fat first so let's put some butter in there. It is Wisconsin. And I think there is a state law that restaurants must use butter and not margarine. It is Wisconsin, right? Oh, and it works better if I turn on the fire. I do have a couple of special eggs here, these nice brown eggs. <laughs> and that, I know they look real, and it's just fun to do that at every cooking class. Uh, I'm going to cut an onion. I think you all know how to cut an onion, but I will cut another an onion. And I did buy the sweet one. At this time of year, after the onions have been sitting so long in the produce department, they are powerful. They are really powerful. So I bought the sweet one. Maybe it'll be, maybe it will let me cry less. Augie, can you bring the wastebasket here? Thanks. Cooking, you know, creates a lot of mess. Even if I want onion slices, I always do half slices. It's so much easier to cut when it's in half and the flat surface is to the bottom. Now, at home, I would save all this onion peel and carrot peel and the celery ends and the, the skin of the garlic. Save it in my freezer until my freezer is full. Pull it all out and make stock. As I said in one cooking class, I love making stock. It's making something delicious out of garbage. And of course, you can cut your onion whatever size you like. You can finely dice it, you can do big chunks. There is no rule that makes it right or wrong. If there were, even the onion police do not come to your house. <laughs> Augie, I'll have you just keep stirring this and you can put the turkey in with that. As long as it sticks, I'll do it like this. I had a bigger knife, a bigger knife like this that I used for years because the leverage was perfect. Well, I evidently threw it away in a bunch of newspaper when I was getting rid of garbage. I, I myself threw it away. And so my wonderful son got me 
ordered this online, but of course it turned out to be little instead of big, but it still has that great leverage. There we go. And the garlic. Now I do have a garlic press and we'll use that, but my, the main reason I have the garlic press today is to smash the radishes. We'll have a couple of ways of smashing radishes. This works okay. It's actually, I think, easier to And Jacques Pepin would never have one of these, or Julia. Okay, there you go. We're going to add to this lots of seasonings and lots of vegetables. I do need my recipe, Og, so I don't forget anything. All right, we'll start with two tablespoons of chili powder. And I will measure because it's cooking class. Two tablespoons of cocoa. This is a fancy recipe. Oops. Adds good flavor, that's all I know. Yeah. It does not end up tasting like chocolate. And then, okay, I'll keep going. What do I put in next? Sugar. How much sugar? One tablespoon. All right. Whoops, not that much. All right. And what's next? One and a half cumin. Cumin, all right. One and a half. This happens to be smoked cumin. What's next? Half a teaspoon cinnamon. All right. Cumin. That's fine. I don't have a preference. I, whichever one I happen to grab on the shelf is what I use. And this is uh, Zanzibar, Tasmania. Take a whiff. And this one is Vietnam. Which one do you like the best? I like this one. Okay, let's use that one. These a Christmas present from our, our daughter, sister to my son, Jay. Okay, how much? Half a teaspoon of cinnamon, all right. And what's next? All right. Well, and next? All right, now, most recipes call for the dark red kidney beans, so we'll put that in there. No, do you drain yours? No. And in honor of my mother-in-law who lives in Texas, we'll put some pinto beans in there. In honor of my mother, who made chili when I was in Chippewa Falls, pork and beans. Sure. Okay, after the beans? Corn. Corn. And that's optional. I simply added it to this recipe because I like it in there. That's all right. Now I put in one can. Should I put in the second can? I was hoping it would be up to you. All right. When, you, when this gets going, add the second can. Juice and all. All right, tomatoes. I purchased these San Marzano fancy schmancy tomatoes. Oh, they're like cherry tomatoes, they're whole. And then the cento. Now, these are packaged in Italy. So um, the tomatoes break down a lot, which is what I want. If you like to have the tomatoes that keep their shape, then you get the American ones, the, the whatever, because they have a, 
something in them so they do not break into tiny pieces. So it's whatever style you like. I like them broken down. Other people like them in whole little pieces at the end. It's up to you. And peeled? Let's see. I, either of those, because I put in my peel and all from my freezer from my garden. Okay. I, I mean, right. some people might not like that texture. But you're making it for your house. Yes. Exactly. Um, salt and pepper. And of course, we in the Midwest have to use the iodized. Ooh, that's my favorite. Yep, because of our thyroid. And there is no iodine in the soil in the Midwest. And there is no fluoride in the Midwest soil either. They were known as the dental pits when it comes to cavities. Growing up in northern Wisconsin, and there was no fluoride in the water as a child, my sisters and I all had a mouthful of cavities. Went to the dentist regularly, but lots of cavities. My husband from Waco, Texas, where fluoride is in the soil, did not have a cavity until he was in middle age. It makes a giant difference. And pepper, I brought the white pepper instead of the black. We'll let it cook, and oh, let's put in the rhubarb. Why don't you smell this one and see if it smells any different to you? Marilyn, is your rhubarb fresh or frozen? Frozen. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And some people have more taste buds. They're super tasters. They can tell a lot of difference. I'm not a super taster. I like strong flavors. I th and Augie can eat strong flavors. Your brother Riley must have a lot of taste buds. He likes things quite mild and bland. And that's not their fault. That, that's the way their tongue was made. <laughs> After it cooks a while, give it a taste with a tasting spoon. And if anyone else wants to give it a taste. I have lots of tasting spoons. Any questions about the rhubarb chili? It's chili with rhubarb added. Now, smashed radishes. Okay. Smashed radishes. And of course there were a few that had the greens on it. That's nice. Cut off the top, cut off the bottom. Then, I need to cut them in half because they're oh, from the North Pole to South Pole. And then, kind of break it down. And all those little craggly pieces will soak up some flavor. Now, you could do the same thing with beautifully sliced radishes. If you have the little radishes, they work great in the, let's see if I can get one in here. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> a garlic fresh to smash the radishes. Now it goes a little faster with a hammer. And I have this one in my kitchen. I did not take it from the garage. I use this in the kitchen. And this is a meat pounder, or you can turn it around, and it has all the prongs, so you can tenderize the meat. Of course, a knife works better, but it's very heavy and it works quite well for smashing radishes. Would anyone else like to smash a radish? You would like to smash a radish. I'll let you use this though so you don't accidentally hit your hand. Just a second. Mom, you wanna come and give it a good whack? Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Whoa, you got it. Go. Good, look at that. Look at that. Ooh. And there's another part to do it. One more. Oh, 
careful, watch your fingers. Also at home, I have an actual hammer in my kitchen that I just use for cooking. That really works well. Okay. Now, onto these smashed radishes, we'll put a little bit of olive oil. Whoops. And do I like the, the um, virgin olive oil or this one? I like the not virgin. The virgin has lots more flavor. Yes, it does. And sometimes I want it just bland. Okay. And then we need some, we, I forgot the vinegar. So Susan found some dill pickle juice downstairs. <coughs> dill pickle juice. And we need salt. <coughs> and we need some pepper. Is that salt basically for flavor, or is it bringing out something in the? Rest? To add flavor, it, it's the uh, it's the oil and vinegar and salt and pepper and sugar is the dressing. Oh, okay. So you are you going to cook these? No. No. Okay. No. Because uh, I already roasted radishes and they taste like potatoes, <coughs> which I like oh. because then you don't have any carbs. The roasted radishes taste like potatoes. And to enhance the flavor, a little bit of sugar in almost everything. Not to make it sweet, but just to enhance the flavor. Let's see here. There is an onion salad that I make. I slice paper thin about eight or nine onions and then simply seasoned rice vinegar that you can buy at the Asian store or even at the grocery store. The seasoned rice vinegar has salt and sugar in it. And it's just onions and seasoned rice vinegar. I could eat it by the cupful. Oh. Okay, let's give this a taste. Mm. Would you like to try? Yes. Okay. Here. I did not put the Dijon mustard in there. And I brought the Dijon mustard, and I think I'm going to put it in with the asparagus and the stir fried peas. Did I? What recipes did I give you? Okay, and did I have Dijon in the smashed radishes? Yes. Thank you. Let's put it in. Thank you for reminding me, Francoise. Okay. Yes. Anybody else want to taste it? Here's tasting spoons right there. No, that's good. You like radishes now? Yeah. Is that too spicy or sharp? You can tell the mustard is Okay, all right. Yep, any one of those little plate tasting spoons there. Yep. And whether you like it or not, it does not mean right or wrong. It just means you do or do not like it. But of course, it's kind of sour, and it's kind of salty, and it's crunchy. I like that. Now, because it is spring, and dandelion greens are so profuse, these are, <laughs> think of the size of the dandelion oh, to make wow. these greens. Yeah. Where did you buy them? These I got from Goodside. Oh, OK. Right, yeah. right. And um, <laughs> I have a recipe for dandelion jelly. But it calls for the blossoms. And I thought, that's a lot of blossoms to get a gallon of blossoms. I, I'm going to try to cook some greens. And then the liquid will be pale colored, be pale green. We'll see how it tastes. 
And then if I just add lots of yellow turmeric to it, it'll look like dandelion jelly. We'll, I'll find out if it works or not. And we're not going to cook these. I'm simply going to lo line the bowls with it to make it look fancy. Augie, can you clean up all this stuff here? Thanks. And I'll move down to the walk. All of this kind of stuff can just go in the garbage. Thanks. All right. It's plugged in. No, it's not plugged in. It's right here. A woman, I used to do catering in private homes and in one very nice home, in most homes, there are not enough circuits in the kitchen. There never are. And, uh, she, and I had cooked there many times, so we'd had all sorts of electrical appliances plugged in all over the house and in the basement and so forth. So when she had her kitchen redone, she had the electrician put a separate circuit on the top outlet and the bottom outlet. And he could do it, but he could not understand why. And she said, because I want to have my toast and my coffee all at the same time and fry my eggs. Because you know that they just don't have enough circuits in the kitchen, right? Olive oil, sesame oil, which does smell like sesame seeds. I can, now we can find them at most stores. Yep. It used to be just Union Oriental down, but now it's most everything. And someone said to me, aren't you afraid you're going to scratch your, your nonstick? I said, well, that could be. But I'm the boss of this. It's not my boss. I use what tools I need. Okay, we have the snow peas. They're the flat ones, usually find in the Asian dishes. There's the sugar snap peas. Now, Augie, can you keep stir frying this for me? Let's get on it here. You can use these two. Those snow peas always have a string on them. So we. No, that doesn't open them up, does it? No, 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 no. But you've eaten stir fry where you get this string in your mouth. Now you're taking off the string. Susan, you want to do these three for me? and just toss them in with Augie. I'm going to turn down the chili. It's cooking like mad. Good, good. Sesame oil and olive oil. It's this little thing here. Yep. I'm going to add the asparagus. Oh, my mother loved asparagus. Now, there is that, if you bend it, it'll break where it's tough and tender. It breaks with a lot of tender still left on there. Yeah. Well, you can tell. Yeah. Now, this is all tough. Now, I probably could have used more of this one. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we need a little bit of sugar to accent the flavor. 
especially on peas. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Iodized salt. Pepper. Okay. Who would like to taste this and tell me if it's ready? I will. I don't know how this spoon is going to work. Soy sauce. And Kikuman is made in Wisconsin. Is it really? Yep. Walworth County. Walworth? Is the home of Kikuman. Really? In, 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 yep. Look at the bottle, yep. Wow, and that's nationwide. Sure, and I'm guessing there may be other Kikoman factories in the nation, but this bottle came from Walworth. Okay, we can turn that off. Thank you, Augie. Now, if you, the chocolate is there, all right, check on the white chocolate. Any question about the asparagus pea pods? I'm going to unplug this. It's cooked hot. Yep. Now, later on in the season, the strawberries are more beautiful and they have bigger greens. Now they are okay. So I melted. That special melting chocolate that comes in blocks and it's easy to work with. Before I started using those blocks of melted chocolate, uh, melting chocolate, I used chocolate chips and that works fine too. By the way, there's a great recipe for fudge frosting. One 12 ounce package, which is now 11 and a half ounces, of melted chocolate chips with, uh, with two cups of sour cream, stir it together and put it on your cake. That's it. Sour cream and melted chocolate chips and you get this beautiful fudge frosting. Okay. Hold it by its greens. Dip. Now that was heated a while ago and it's still soft. Yep. Augie, you want to come and do, dip some of these for me? I'm going to get the white chocolate to show you how to decorate these if you want to. Is that from a block also? It is. It melts so nicely. Can you get that at this time of the year other than Christmas? Yes, uh, at Piggly Wiggly and at uh, Pick and Save. Okay. And then... You can be as careful as you want or not. <laughs> then, another way is, where are the gloves? This is going to be a little hot. And no matter how you put it on there, it will look correct. If it's globby or stringy, it all looks wonderful. We have chocolate dipped strawberries. We have these snacky peas. We have asparagus and pea pods. We have smashed radishes. Oh, I did not put onto the dandelion greens. So it's for supper. <laughs> Just as one. <laughs> it does look great, doesn't it? And then we have the rhubarb chili. Spring foods. <laughs>